Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for today. Uh, this one, um, I wanted to basically, some people ask for like a guide or like a walkthrough for Elite. I do plan on doing that. Uh, I was kind of hopeful that the this would be the full <laughs> run of Hive Elite, but there's some real big balancing issues presently with uh, Terror, the final boss, so I don't want to show that or show our progress on that because uh, we're getting down to like the third phase. It's just the way the fight is structured right now, like it's it's got a it's got some balancing issues that's for sure, uh, but it, realistically for the first two bosses, uh, this one you'll see now in Deathstroke on the second one, I don't feel like any changes need to be made. Uh, these elite raids are certainly a lot harder than anything we've seen in a while. I put them on the same kind of comparison to uh, JFAE and USE, the most recent ones during Age of Justice, but they're certainly harder than like Star or Age of Justice or Amazon Fury Part Three, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll get to the fight here. This is this is Hive Elite first boss. I'm just going to show you the two boss fights. Uh, this one, you don't need any kind of crazy setups. You just need two tanks. Basically, standing at each door, uh, you're going to want to position the tank so that they can pull the ads that spawn. And basically, you're killing or wiping the ads uh, from one side, then going to the other, going back until the boss spawns and you kill him in the center. Uh, the one thing, you basically have a choice. Uh, you'll see these Hive Engineers that spawn. Uh, they're basically, as soon as they spawn, they're going to book it straight towards these turrets to activate them. The thing is, you can pull them. Um, I tried using like Einstein Ray on them as well. The problem is, like a, the second you pull them, they'll walk straight back and they're immune to your pull. So it, it's it's not as practical to try to keep pulling them away because they're still going to get there because they're, they're basically running towards it, as you can see in the video. Uh, and you're constantly trying to pull them back. If you try to DPS them, it's just... It's just a hassle. Now, in terms of why you need to do that, there's some feats for it. Um, what the turret does when it activates is basically fires like a little ball at you. Uh, it's going to stun you and hit you for like 2k. So it's not like it's that much damage. It's a little bit more annoying for the tanks, especially the stun. So it's we ended up uh, just letting them build the turrets. Like You could also destroy the turrets, but they got some high health. So really, your best bet is uh, just to let the engineers build the turrets and then if figure out if you want to destroy them or not like they're not going to cause you to wipe like there's there's no point that the turrets are going to be like oh i'm going to wipe now because there's their turrets spawning uh that won't be the case because they're really they're they don't they're in sequential consequential damage uh the almost annoying thing is just the stun so basically and the engineers are going to keep spawning out each time so it's like each time you do the ads, like one engineer spawns, then two engineer spawns, and three engineer spawns. So really, it's not going to be any helpful at all. It, it, they're just going to keep booking it back. So if you try to manage it, then really, you're not doing yourself any favors. Uh, in terms of the DPS for this raid, uh, you still have to keep it ranged. There's there's too many ads, especially buzz cut. has got some splash damage that you really don't want to mess around with. Uh, so you want to keep it to like range power sets or range rotations if you can. Uh, the, like the hallways and stuff you can melee on it's not a big deal, the b-bots are going to uh, do some splash damage but besides that there's really not too much of an issue uh, this fight is just straightforward tank and spank uh, there's really nothing that stands out about it in terms of when the boss is in the center oh I should mention the other thing um, you'll see I think I died to it once as well but the uh, hive, what was that The basically there's going to be an ad that's going to teleport to the back on a skull and he's got two handed then he's going to do like a doom spin uh, I think it's like the Hive Bludgeoner or something like that. Uh, he just teleported me there if you're watching it, and I died. Um, basically, as soon as you see that, him do that skull, just whole block, he teleported back to me Universal because we're in the back. Uh, and then basically he's going to doom spin and go back towards the tank while he doom spins. Uh, so it's basically you just have to watch his teleport. Uh, that's pretty much the only ad that's going to kill you. The engineers really do no damage. Uh, it's more just that teleporting ad that you have to worry about. Uh, and then in terms of buzz cut, uh, oh, actually, sorry, I should mention the Hive Wasp. The Hive Wasp also does a mortar attack. Uh, he's also lungeable, so if you've got tanks that are on top of their lunges, you really don't have any concern at all towards that. But if, if a tank is just going to let him you know, do spam mortar on the group, then yeah, that's going to be an issue, especially in Elite. Uh, but yeah, in terms of that, we're just kind of back and go, going forth between the ads until the ads stop spawning. On the one side, basically, the ads will stop spawning, and the only thing that spawns will be engineers. So, in the engineers, you just leave because they're just going to go towards the turrets, so you don't have to worry about them. As a troll, I'm just going going back and forth and just you know throwing up a stun to help out. 
but uh, once again, it's not as necessary. But uh, we'll leave it for that, because that, that's really it all it is, just a tank and spank fight. Okay, guys, now we're on to Deathstroke. This is a very uh, unique and interesting fight. Uh, this one, I was actually ple pleasantly surprised and took us a few attempts to actually learn the mechanics. Uh, so we'll try to 
give as much as an in-depth explanation as I can. Uh, so basically, number one, you do not want to run supply drops. Uh, everyone takes supply drops off your bar for this. Uh, basically, you put a supply drop down. Uh, as you can see right at the beginning of the clip, he'll put a supply drop on himself. That He's going to heal up, and he's going to do a 360-degree laser beam from his rifle. That will one-shot you if you're not blocking. Uh, so you basically, it's an enrage mechanic for using supply drops, just like Terra has an enrage mechanic for using orbital strikes. So do not use... Uh, supply drops at all in this fight don't do it uh, it's not worth it and you'll see we almost even almost wipe at the end uh, because of it uh, someone put it on so basically he's going to go through different phases uh, basically the first phase or they're basically the random each time but like our phase is this one here uh, where he's going to do his neutralizers same thing as you saw in my test video one of each rolls i think it's the closest to the center uh, might not be but at least one of each roll is going to get targeted and has to go turn the, uh, these cogs. Uh, the bigger issue and why you need two tanks is that uh, he, when he goes into this phase, he's going to debuff one of the tanks, just as you saw he got de debuff profusion. That debuff is going to instantly shred you if you get hit. You can kind of survive for like a few seconds if you get Amazon deflection, but if you get debuff, you, there's a, like a 90% chance you're dying as a tank. Uh, and then you can't have that, obviously, because it's the, the, the death counter. So ideally what we had was two tanks, uh, and then they would balance their hard taunts off each other. So if their one was debuffed, that one the other could hard taunt and turn the cog. Or if the other one was not debuffed, he could turn the cog as well. So that's your best setup. You're going to need two tanks for this. Uh, essentially, the, all these phases are damage-based. So basically, to push them into the next phase uh, is based on your damage. Uh, and it just keeps cycling through each time. Uh, so his second phase... Uh, actually, I should mention his skull attacks first. So uh, he, Deathstroke has a lot of skull attacks. Each skull attack has a chance to hit you or hit the group. He's got like a knife execution, his uh, pistol finisher, uh, his staff spin, uh, stuff like that. So basically, your safest bet is to block, just tap block every skull just in case that it's on the group or, or on the tank. You don't know for sure. If it's like you see like a staff animation, then you know it's just on the tank and you're safe. Uh, if it's towards the group, uh, then you know it could hit you like the knife execution and you could die. So it, it's the safest bet is just to sit and block through um, basically uh, that's every one of his skull attacks. Uh, his next phase here, you'll see it here. Um, he gets his like iron suit on him. Um, basically at that point, all it is is just doing damage to him to push him to the next phase. I should also mention that at some point he's going to target you and you're going to see like a blue... Um, uh, basically icon or uh, shield kind of icon around you. So think of it like the snipers in FOSS 3 where you got the, if you ranged, you got the red um, kind of aura on you and then um, he would attack you and kill you. Uh, you have to block through that. It killed me um, if you weren't blocking. So your best bet is if, you, if a player has that blue, you'll see what I mean, but it's like a blue shield icon. If he's got that circling him, then you're definitely going to want to block through that. Uh, and th the phase here, he's going to get into the trap four phase. This is the most difficult phase to deal with. Basically, sections of the floor uh, are going to be lit up red, and they're going to do a damage over time, probably tw between 25 and 30k ticks on you. Um, so you have to move to a square that's not occupied. The issue is that eventually all the squares are going to be occupied. So your best bet is save all your orbitals. And don't use a single orbital until that trap phase. So you, you, get, you push them out of that trap phase as quick as you possibly can because it's all damage-based. So the more damage you do, the quicker he'll be out of that phase. But if you're worried constantly dodging red squares, you have to dodge those laser beams that'll track you that you saw from the sky, similar to like HH. So it's there's a lot of things in this fight that you don't want to waste orbitals for. The other phases you can kind of go through and it's not too much of an issue, but the trap phase will 100% kill you because the floor will be entirely lit up red and you'll be taking damage over time until you DPS them down. So they save all your orbitals for that moment, push them out, and then you're good. Um, trying to think of what else here. Uh, covered his skull attacks. That's all his phases. So he's got the neutralizer phase. You can kill the thing in the center. Um, I think it's like a related for feet, but in, in terms of you just want to beat it, you don't have to destroy that. Uh, that just ends the phase right there. It eventually ends anyway, so it's, it wasn't really necessary to destroy that. But yeah, so he's got his uh, iron case suit, he's got the neutralizer, he's got the trap floors, uh, he's got his skull attacks, he's got his supply drop and rage, um, and I think that was about it. 
I don't think there was anything else that I missed covering. But yeah, all, all this, basically the entire Deathstroke fight is a damage check. So obviously since we're like, you know, last tier gear uh, rating, uh, it's obviously going to take a little bit harder. And as we level up in gear and damage, uh, this Deathstroke fight will become easier because you'll be able to um, get out of his phases quicker. Uh, but that's it, guys. Um, hopefully, there's some bouncing or we figure out more for Terra. So I'm, uh, I've got like a clip of her fight, but there's no point in me uploading it because the fight could completely change in the next few days if they're going to adjust it. Um, these first two fights, I don't see any issues with. You know, the fights are about 10 minutes each. Uh, and there wasn't really any like, oh, my God, this is so broken moments in either of these two fights. So I think the these two bosses will stay exactly the same. Any questions, put them in the comments below. Take care, guys. Let's go save your friend.